Remember, when we used to be kids, we were curious about everything that was happening around us. And that's what made us all very special. Now, if that quality is retained and is complemented with a strong vision, you're going to be a special leader one day. Our guest in this segment is one such leader. He's a big fan of Marvel Comics. He loves fountain pens, loves writing, and most importantly, he was one of the strongest pillars of building the India Trailblazer community in the last six years. His curiosity and strong vision has led him to build a team of more than 400 plus Salesforce professionals at Nagaro. Let's welcome Vyom Jain, Managing Director and CRM Business Unit Head at Nagaro. Hey Vyom, how are you? I'm doing great, uh, Kiran. Thanks for having me here today. I'm excited for the conversation. The pleasure is ours. And don't expect everything to be easy. We have some very tough questions for you today. All right. Okay. Vyom, what's your love story with the fountain pens, first of all? Okay, I think that's 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 a great question. Because you could just spill it on your friends? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I've done that. I've done that in the past. Uh, I mean, um, yeah, so I think that that goes back to school times. Uh, I would say uh, during my fifth or sixth standard when we started using the fountain pens, uh, I, I, I kind of uh, got uh, fascinated by the fountain pens, the, the flow of the ink and uh, the way it, it wrote because we were writing with pencils before uh, fifth standard, right? And uh, when I started writing with fountain pens, I never, never, because we didn't have gel pens at that point in time or ball pens or anything. And fountain pens uh, were the thing that even our teachers suggested that we should use. So my, even my mother was quite fond of uh, fountain pens. So she got me. In fact, uh, my handwriting looked pen. much better with the fountain pen. Oh yes, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, I, I can, uh, I can kind of bet on it. Uh, if you write, write with a, a ball pen uh, or a gel pen. I can write faster with a fountain pen. <laughs> ah, that's because you're used to it. I'm used to it. Yeah, I, I, I even in my Absolutely. Uh, uh, office meetings, I'm writing these notes. One of my colleagues, he said that you still write with fountain pens. <laughs> that's something which is strange. But but yes, uh, so, <laughs> but so I have a, a kind of a flair for fountain pens, uh, I would say. Kiran. How many pens do you have right now, Vyom? How many? What's the collection? I, I have around around 35 pens, I would say. So I off and on wow. uh, buy these fountain pens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think, uh, wow. Wow. Uh, and and I'm writing with different color inks. I'm uh, using a red or a purple or a, a, a gray or maybe a chocolate. There's a thing called uh, a chocolate ink, right? So that's, that's again, right. uh, beautiful. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I, I like uh, writing with fountain <laughs> pens, Kiran. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. So moving from fountain pens to selling stocks, is it true that, you know, you sold stocks of the company that you are planning to set up to your friends when you're in fifth standard, which was like you were 10 years around that yeah. time? Yeah. So I was around 10 years and I was in fifth standard. I distinctly remember I got a good training from my uh, grandfather on how stock markets work. So uh, I had a fair understanding, whatever understanding. I now had my question at is. That point my question is, what happened to the shareholders? Did they get their profits? Did the company do well? <laughs> what What happened? <laughs> no, the company didn't do well, uh, Kiran. I think uh, I had to uh, refund uh, the entire amount of money that I had uh, borrowed from the, the shareholders. So I, in fact, when I started, I, I created 20, 20 shares, uh, five rupees a piece, and I sold it to my classmates. Uh, and I think, uh, uh, two weeks, two weeks down the line, when I had uh, sold these stocks, they started looking for returns, and of course, you cannot expect returns in two weeks, right? So I had to exactly. refund that amount, but the passion for uh, writing continued. Oh, you returned it back. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. What 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 was your what was your writing focused on, Vyom? What were you good at? What are you still good at? Yeah. So I think uh, I was uh, quite fond of uh, writing on sports, specifically on cricket. Uh, so. Gavaskar, mm -hmm. Sunil Gavaskar was uh, one of the inspiration, I would say. He uh, yeah, Let uh, me stop you there. Record. For the audience, those of you who are not aware of cricket, cricket is a very popular game, uh, you know, in India. And that is what Vyom is talking about. Go ahead, Vyom. Yeah. 
So I think uh, Sunil Gavaskar uh, created that uh, record in uh, the test matches where he scored. He was the first uh, mm-hmm. person to score 10,000 runs. And uh, again, that was one of the inspiration for me. Uh, uh, another inspiration was uh, my father uh, who kind of bought these uh, uh, monthly books uh, or monthly magazines on cricket, right? So I used to read them a lot. And uh, that's where I started writing a bit about cricket, right? So some articles uh, in whatever capacity I can write when I was 10 years old. But I, I got that passion of writing and that too with a fountain pen. Uh, so I think uh, that was something which was uh, fascinating. Uh, so I wrote uh, some some uh, some blogs or some uh, articles. We didn't have computers at that point in time, so I couldn't upload any of them. But then uh, I, I wrote them uh, uh, on a paper and I used to show it to my friends and to my... Um, seniors whom I used to travel in the bus uh, to the school. So I think uh, that those were great times. And I think that was something that uh, that that created that hobby of writing in me. You know what? You should not stop writing or playing cricket. I know you're a big fan of that game. You should continue that. Now moving to my next question, Vyom. Um, now, I've, I've seen you for the last six years and I know how you know, how you provide that customer experience to your customers. And uh, from my conversation with you the other day, I came to now know that it was from your grandfather, that inspiration. Talk to Correct. us a little more about that. Absolutely. So uh, my father and my grandfather had a business and we were uh, kind of uh, manufacturing certain parts for the motorcycles, for different motorcycles. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think uh, my grandfather or my father, we used to, I used to go with them to the, uh, market where uh, he met a lot of customers. My grandfather used to meet customers. The way he spoke with the customers, the way he uh, kind of created a relationship with the customers, right? And uh, the way he interacted. I, and I think that's something that uh, ingrained those, co- those concepts of uh, customer uh, success, customer relationship within me. And that's where I think uh, where here I am. I'm kind of managing a CRM projects. So I'm, uh, yeah, I think that goes back to uh, my my school days and my college days when I used to go with my father and my grandfather to the market and uh, speak absolutely. with the Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, we, and it's not just customer success, right? You, uh, you have been a great leader uh, uh, at, at Nagaro and we want to talk more about that as we go on in the interview. But tell us about how you made it to Salesforce ecosystem, Vyom. I'm, I'm pretty sure you didn't start off with uh, Salesforce oh. as, as your first technology. So, a little, a little about that journey as well, because yeah. our audience would be, you know, interested. Sure, in sure. That. So I think uh, when I started off after my college, I was a Java developer, and uh, I, uh, in fact, I started my journey with uh, Nagaro itself. I worked there for almost ten years, joined Sapient after that, worked there for five years, and uh, I got an opportunity to play multiple roles uh, in Java. I mean, uh, I was an on-site coordinator uh, in US for a couple of years. Then, uh, when I came back, I was a Java architect. And I think uh, before starting the Salesforce practice at Nagaro in uh, 2011, 2012 sometime, I think uh, I had been playing the role of a Java architect till that point in time. But then uh, uh, our, our uh, CEO, Mr. Manas Faloria, he asked me to uh, to kind of uh, help set up this practice in uh, Salesforce itself, right? And uh, mm-hmm. with, we had a- Which was pretty new of, then, right? which was pretty new, which is 2012 uh, mm-hmm. or later part of 2011, I would say. So it's almost 10 years back. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think uh, we had a few customers uh, who were interested in, uh, they were already our customers on the other tech stacks, but then they wanted to work with us on Salesforce also, right? And that's where uh, we I started learning a bit of Salesforce. We also onboarded one of the Java architects, uh, or, or rather a Salesforce architects, I would say. Uh, so he joined us and uh, we started building up this practice, right? And that's where uh, the journey started uh, with with a couple of projects which were not that big. Maybe a couple of them were in support mode or uh, enhancements mode and we were not doing a big implementation projects. I think that was the start right, of our right. journey way back, 10 years back. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. So it's been a wonderful journey in the last 10 years. You have grown the team by leaps and bounds. Uh, you have been a Java developer. Uh, you have also seen the world of Salesforce. What are those, you know, one or two differences you see between both the technologies? 
Uh, see, I think uh, a person having a good Java background is easily able to scale up to Salesforce. I would say, but there are certain differences. I think uh, uh, Salesforce offers a lot of things which are out of the box, right? Uh, so something which you don't need to create uh, from scratch. Uh, Java, the .NETs, you would need to do a lot of uh, coding. So it's so Java or .NET may not be providing that low code or no code kind of uh, functionalities, right? Though there are frameworks available and you can utilize them. But then of course, uh, uh, Salesforce is something which you can get started in a very, very short uh, span of time, right? You just need to do some configurations. Of course, you need to do some uh, configurations and uh, set up uh, the environment for the customer. And then uh, I think uh, based on the customer needs, you can always enhance the platform, you can work on a lot of uh, further configurations or maybe customizations as required by the, the customer. Absolutely, absolutely. Vyom, uh, you're, you're, a, you're a leader at Nagaru now. Um, you own the CRM business unit. What are those very important leadership lessons you learned at a very early stage in your life? And how did they impact you? Sure, I think so. Uh, uh, this all started almost 10 years back when uh, I got this opportunity to set up uh, uh, this uh, Salesforce practice at Nagaro, right? And uh, uh, I think there was a lot of uh, lessons uh, that I have learned from our leaders at Nagaro. Uh, so we have got this entrepreneurial kind of environment uh, wherein uh, you, can, you can take your decisions, you can uh, do the things the way you want. There's a lot of support from your management when you are uh, uh, you are you are kind of setting up such uh, business units or you are setting up such practices, there's a lot of support, a lot of free hand that is given. There's no micromanagement, I would say, but there's a lot of mentoring that uh, our our senior colleagues provide, right? So a lot right, of mentorship right. that I got from uh, Manas, from Vikram, and other senior leaders at Nagaro while we were setting up this uh, business unit or the practice uh, in CRM. I, I also heard that you have these fancy titles. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I was coming to that. Uh, in, in fact, uh, our uh, leaders, uh, uh, the team leads and the project managers uh, who are owning this uh, project deliveries, uh, so they are called mm -hmm. project CEOs, right? <laughs> wow. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I think uh, that that's a that's that's quite an old concept at Nagaro. Uh, but what that essentially means is that uh, our leaders have got that. Uh, authority that uh, freedom to take the decisions right of course there are checks and balances in place there are a lot of governance there, there is governance there is there are governance teams who are monitoring the health of the project but then uh, at least uh, from a decision making standpoint um, our, our uh, leaders team leads project managers they are all empowered to take a lot of decisions right uh, absolutely yeah. so i think no empowerment freedom to fail and you know spotting talent absolutely these are qualities of a great leadership right 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 and uh, i'm i'm really happy that you have been nurtured by that kind of you know mindset yeah. in your organization absolutely absolutely Vyom, uh, you know you've been for 10 years in the salesforce ecosystem and i'm pretty sure you you've seen some challenging implementations in salesforce you know take us through one of one of one of those implementations which you know made you lose your sleep <laughs> absolutely i think uh, a lot of us uh, lost our sleep in that uh, project uh, but then i mm -hmm. think uh, at the end of the day it was a very very successful uh, project for us so i'll talk about one of the okay. projects that we did a couple of years back wherein uh, the client was it, it was a very very strategic client for nagaro and uh, mm -hmm. we had uh, uh, two challenges i would highlight uh, one is uh, from a project uh, delivery standpoint, a timeline standpoint. The other one is from more mm -hmm. from a technical standpoint. So I'll talk about the first uh, challenge, which was around the project timeline. So the client was very, very um, aggressive uh, with the timelines. So they were looking for an implementation mm -hmm. uh, within five months, right? And uh, I think mm -hmm. that was something which was not doable, I would say, because we did our estimates, our uh, due diligence, and uh, we came up with a timeline of around eight months. And uh, I think uh, uh, the way we convinced our clients to uh, to to agree to a eight months timeline was by dividing this project into three phases. And uh, of course, the first phase would have more high priority items followed by the lower priority items in the next uh, two phases. Uh, 
uh we were able to convince the clients and uh, it was a very very successful delivery not a smooth one i would say but it was of course a very successful uh, project for us uh but along with uh, this implementation that we were doing we were having uh, some technical challenges and one of the major technical challenge was around uh, the integration uh, with one of the third parties right one of the third party systems and uh, wherein uh, we were expecting some data from the third party system and uh, we were not able to get that data within the timelines that we were expecting right as per the project plan we were not able to get those uh, uh, that, get that data so what we did from our side was that we um, we we did the uh, implementation from our side we created a lot of test data or a uh, sample data right um, and uh, or dummy data you can say and uh, we uh, tested our implementation using these uh, dummy uh, data that we had right and uh, of course uh, during this uh, uh, entire implementation phase we were also following up cons consistently with our clients with the third party providers to kind of uh, share that data share those uh, uh important data points with us uh within the timelines uh there were some delays yes there were some delays but uh, with the strategy that we adopted wherein we were doing our ground work uh before uh, the project uh, before the project went live i think that really helped us mm -hmm. in uh, meeting the timelines as well so uh towards the uat phases and the uh, the, the go live phases i think uh there were not many major challenges because we had already done our side of things absolutely so complexity at implementation Correct. level technical level data level etc etc awesome thank you so much for pointing this out uh, uh, sharing this uh, experience of yours with sure. us viom now you know which brings me to my last question today uh, you know you, you and nagara have been great champions of our programs and campaigns in india you have always supported the trailblazer community meetups with your space you know with food great food great swag and all um, in the last 5 to 7 years that you have been with us what does the india trailblazer community mean to you know we hope oh, it it means a lot kiran i think uh, the community has been uh, fantastic uh, all amazing people there in the community uh, mm -hmm. uh, i think uh, not just uh, the events that we are hosting at our uh, offices but also the other right. locations and uh, i have been a part of some of the meetups uh, uh, now virtually as well yep. so uh, i mm -hmm. think uh, uh, great sessions great uh, knowledge sharing sessions uh, a great uh, uh, i would say uh, uh, i would say it, it's a uh, forum where people can uh, express themselves they can talk about the latest exactly. latest and greatest in technology and uh, there's a right. opportunity to meet a lot of uh, senior colleagues senior people uh, in this uh, process right so senior people from the community people like gorav kechpal or uh, maybe uh, the other people uh, uh, abhinav and uh, atul mm -hmm. uh, they have been right. champions of uh, the trail players a community i think uh, there's a lot of uh, learning from uh, the senior people and from people who are smes in uh, the specific areas so i think mule soft uh, meetups or maybe uh sfmc meetups i think uh, there's a lot of learning right i think uh, it's it's the right forum where people can enhance their knowledge they can meet like minded people and learn from uh, the peers in the community i think that's one aspect and uh, i think the other aspect is around uh, uh, the way salesforce uh, and your team kiran uh, uh, have contributed to Uh, the growth of this uh, salesforce talent uh, at 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 a college level right so the way you have been hosting uh, or uh, doing these uh, uh, trainings for uh, the people in the colleges i think that has been phenomenal so uh, people uh, when they are in their final years of uh, their college i think they are uh, already well versed with uh, salesforce they are doing a lot of certifications uh, so they are industry ready i would say right so when uh, people join uh, nagaro or any other organization for that matter i think uh, they are already ready to deliver on the projects so i think uh, hats hats off to to your team and uh, to salesforce uh, for creating such an uh, ecosystem thank you thank you so much now see there is a huge demand for salesforce Absolutely. developers uh, in india and valued partners like you need them more than anybody sure. and we are trying to do our best you know it's the least we can do for you all. sure i think we have hired you uh, thank you yeah sorry i, I think i we have hired uh, from a lot of uh, events that uh, your team has uh, 
uh, conducted from uh, Bangalore, from Hyderabad. Uh, there have been several events from where we have hired a lot of uh, uh, Salesforce uh, candidates uh, right out of college. Right. I think uh, they have right. been great colleagues now. They are working with Nagaro and uh, they have really contributed to our uh, success. Yeah. Thank you so much uh, for that support, Vyom. Uh, you know, you have been one of those first organizations to have, you know, hired people from our training and enablement. Again, Vyom, uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you today. Uh, and, uh, you My know, pleasure. Yeah. but before you go, before you go, uh, recently through you, I came to know that you lost your younger brother and it broke my heart, right? And uh, uh, trust me, it, it's, it's, not, it's, not an, uh, it's not an easy thing to deal with. And you have fond memories of playing cricket with him, right? Uh, you know, in, in memory of him, as a token of some appreciation, we would like to gift you this cricket kit so that you can play with your kids. You should not stop writing or playing cricket, writing about cricket or playing cricket. So we would like to give you this cricket kit so that you can play with your friends and boys. Around. Really appreciate that, Kiran. Uh, thank you so much for the wonderful gift. And uh, thanks for having me today. Absolutely. Yeah. You're welcome. The pleasure is ours. Thanks, Vyom. Thank All right. Thank you.